Bible with me to uh, Matthew's Gospel first. Uh, we'll be in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John tonight. Uh, but we are continuing our series looking at these, these men, these 12 apostles, who, who said, wherever he leads, I will go. And they meant that with all of their heart. They really did mean it, and they followed him, and they ultimately, all of them gave their lives for Christ. Now, John, we don't really know much about what happened to John after his exile, but we know that he was tortured for Christ, and then he was exiled on the Isle of Patmos. And so, uh, looking at these men encourages our faith and builds our faith so that we might uh, grow in our strength and fervor for the Lord. And so that's, uh, that's why we want to study these guys and look at them. But first, uh, as we think about John, I've uh, entitled the message tonight, The Dependable Disciple. Now, John calls himself the beloved disciple, so I was, attempted, I was tempted to name the, the sermon tonight the beloved disciple, but I decided I wanted to call him dependable. And I think that uh, that really characterizes who John is. And we're going to find out why in just a few moments, why I named it that. But John was the younger brother of James and the son of Zebedee and Salome. Now, we looked at James last week. Remember? Does anybody remember what Jesus called James and John? The, the, the epitaph that he gave them. What was it? That's it. Boanerges. And uh, that translates to sons of thunder or even lightning because that word has to do with energy. So uh, that, that's uh, the name that he gave them. But he was the younger brother, probably not quite as radical as James was, uh, but, but uh, he was called Boronergis. You know, the, uh, the, the Blues flew the F.A. 18 Hornet for 34 years. Let me back up and let me say that again. <laughs> For 34 years, they've been flying with that same platform. Is that right, brother? Yeah, that's right. That, to me, that, that tells me that that aircraft is dependable. For 34 years. I mean, and now only because it's becoming more difficult to maintain them, parts are scarce, whatever, they're moving up to the, uh, the Rhino, the, the Super Hornet. Isn't that what it's called, the Rhino? The Super Hornet, sir? Rhino. Rhino. The Super Hornets. And so uh, today was their, their last flight uh, in the uh, Legacy Hornets. Uh, the longest run of any of their 10 airframes that they had was the Legacy Hornet. And I also think, and you can, you can kind of get in the debate whether uh, you see these two grills up here, the, the Ford or the Chevy, both of these want to advertise as the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road, whatever. And some of you probably have a testimony about yours, whether it's Chevy, Dodge, Toyota. I think Toyota actually takes that every year. Uh, and so even though they both, they both uh, say that they, their trucks are the most dependable. But when it comes to following the Lord Jesus Christ, are you dependable? Can, can the Lord depend on you to carry His Word? to live for Him? Or are you kind of flaky? You know, there's a lot of Christians today that are, that are flaky. And if, they, if anything goes a little bit bad now, all of a the sudden, and they're having a bad day, all of a the sudden, they're off the rails. Are you dependable? Are you steadfast? Now, the Lord doesn't call us to success as a Christian. But He calls us to faithfulness. He calls us to say, wherever you lead, I will go, and to mean that. John was a faithful disciple even when others betrayed the Lord. You think about that. John was a faithful disciple even when others betrayed the Lord. Let's look first at John's calling. Matthew chapter 4, verses 21 through 22. And going on from there, he, Jesus saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and they followed him. So we see John's calling and immediately Jesus 
tells him that he's, he's going to go where he leads and John decides to follow and he leaves his nets beside the sea. And sometimes for us to be the dependable disciples that we are called to be means that we have to leave things behind. It means that we have to drop the things that are not the calling of God. We talked about that last time. We said God wants our, our passion to be directed and focused on Jesus and Jesus alone. That everything else that we have, that, we're, that we love, that we're passionate about, all of that is subservient to following Christ. And so John's calling, he, like the other disciples, followed Jesus, he left everything behind so that he could go on this journey with Jesus and follow Him and be discipled by Him. And he didn't know where that would lead. That's the key about it all. When John left those nets beside the sea, he was leaving family, he was leaving security, he was leaving his home. He left everything that he knew behind so that he could follow the call that Jesus had placed on his life. And when we say yes to the Lord Jesus, we're letting go of control of the outcome. Amen? We have to let control, let control go by the wayside. That's a net that we can't carry with us. We see John's calling. Secondly, I want you to listen to, look at his closeness and think about his closeness for just a moment. Uh, the Bible tells us he was partners with Peter in Luke chapter 5. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And so the language there indicates to us that they were in some sort of fishing enterprise. They, they had a business together. And so whenever... James and John and Peter left behind their nets and they left their father, left their home. They were also leaving their source of income. But these guys already had a relationship with each other. And I believe God worked through that relationship that they had already established with you. They were friends. Aren't you glad for Christian friends? Brothers and sisters in the faith that you can lean on, depend on. And so not only were they friends and partners... But now they're being discipled together with Jesus. And Jesus chooses Peter, James, and John to go with him and be close to him on several occasions. And just, just going to hit these real quick. At the transfiguration, the Bible says that six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up on a high mountain. And then in Mark chapter 5, at the healing of Jairus' daughter... The Bible says, and he, followed no, uh, he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And then again in Mark chapter 14, at Jesus' agony in the garden. You know, he prayed for you and me in the garden. And he sweat great drops of blood, agonizing there. And the Bible says, he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. So here's John. He's witnessing firsthand the suffering of Jesus. He's witnessing uh, the water turning to wine at Cana of Galilee. He's witnessing the transfiguration. He's witnessing all of these things. And all of that indicates to us, once again, that he was close to Jesus. We saw the same thing about Peter. We saw the same thing about James. And John is there as well. Closeness to Jesus. Now here, here's an interesting one. Uh, that I, that I want to add in here, and we're going to see this a little bit more in just a moment, but in John's Gospel, and we'll stay in John's Gospel, so you can go ahead and turn there. Uh, John chapter 13, Jesus, at the table, began to be troubled in His spirit. Truly, truly, I say to you, He said, one of you will betray me. John chapter 13, I hear some pages turning. Verse 22, the disciples looked at one another uncertain of whom he spoke. So Jesus says, one of you guys are, are going to betray me. And they all start looking around going, uh, talking about you? I know he ain't talking about me. He must be talking about you. So they're looking at each other. And then one of his disciples whom Jesus loved was reclining at, ta at table at Jesus' side. In other words, Jesus 
and John were sitting next to each other. So you get the picture in a lot of the portrayals of the Last Supper show Jesus at the center of the table and then John on one side and Judas on the other. And so he's, le he's reclining at Jesus' side and then Simon Peter, like he wants to figure out who this is, motioned to him, hey, 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 ask Jesus who he's talking about. And so that disciple leaning back against Jesus. So here's John. He's right next to Jesus. And he leans over and he kind of whispers. What are you talking about? Who, who, who are you talking about, Jesus? Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, It is he who I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So Jesus kind of, watch what I do. So when he had dipped the morsel and gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, what you're going to do, do it quickly. Okay, so you see closeness even there at the table. Where does John want to be? No matter what. John wants, where? He wants to be next to Jesus. Hey Amen, what an example for our Christian walk. That no matter what circumstance we find ourselves in, our desire, our one true hope, is that we can be close to Jesus, no matter what. No matter where that leads us, no matter what circumstances we find ourselves in, that we could be close to Jesus. And that's what John wanted more than anything. And so we see John's calling his closeness, we see his character. Now, going back to that same, same night, John was called upon. Jesus sent him ahead to go and prepare the Last Supper. And so, John was called upon to do that. Jesus was able to say to John, Hey, I want you to go take care of preparing, getting everything ready. And so, he sent him to do that. Here's another one that's really important, I think. John chapter 19. You can go ahead and turn there with me. The Bible says in verse 26 that when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Now, John is using that language, the disciple whom he loved, so he doesn't reveal his identity, but we know it's John. Uh, so he's being humble by saying that. We're going to dig into that in a moment. But, so when Jesus looks from the cross, which disciple does he see? He sees John. Where's Peter? He's over here weeping. <laughs> Where's the rest of the disciples? Isaiah said he'd uh, strike the shepherd. And the sheep will scatter. And that's what happened. When Jesus was taken into custody, all the disciples left, save one. One disciple that we know of that Scripture tells us. The only one that was there at the cross that we know of, and the women, was John. John's there. He's dependable. He didn't betray Jesus, but he was at the cross when the others fled. And then because he was there, now partly because he was there, but this is just the sovereignty of the Lord and his decision. And he says, he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And then from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. So the Bible teaches us that Jesus' concern for his mother, probably who was becoming, uh, who was uh, uh, go, getting older, I don't know why I need to say old. She's not an old lady. That's not what I'm trying to say. She's getting older. She needs care. She needs someone to take care of her. Joseph at this point is probably deceased. Which, by the way, indicates to us that Jesus suffered the loss of his earthly father. Um, in all things, he was tempted even as we are, and yet he was without sin. He even suffered through Losing loved ones on this earth. And yet, he was without sin. And so, 
Jesus hands over the responsibility of care of Mary to the dependable disciple, to John. And he knows that John's going to take care of her because he's dependable. And so, the Bible says he took her into his own home. Here's another one about his character. This is kind of obscure. and You don't have to turn here. But in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 9, Paul talks about Cephas and James and John. And he describes them as pillars. He says, they seem to be pillars. And they gave the right hand of fellowship to Barnabas and me that we should go to the Gentiles. And they would go to the circumcised. But you think about pillars for just a moment. You can't see the pillars uh, in this facility, but there are pillars here. There, there are large uh, pieces of steel, I-beams, all throughout this facility, beneath the sheetrock in these walls. Aren't you glad you can depend on them tonight? <laughs> If you couldn't depend on them, guess what? The roof's coming down over your head. But we can depend on them. And, and that's what he's saying. He's saying about Peter and James and John that they were pillars in the church. Not, not that they were uh, the, the ones with the authority, even though they, God had given them authority. But the point is that they were dependable. They were the ones that, were, that everyone else leaned upon. In the church. Everyone else looked to them in the church. They were the kinds of Christians that other people could depend on. Question. Is that true about you? Can other Christians look to you and say, I need you right now. And you be the one who's dependable enough to stop what you're doing and pray for them. And love them through their situation. Now I understand. You can't, you can't do that for every person. But God will lead you to the people that he wants you to do that for. Can you, can you be dependent upon? Can they depend on you? That you're going to love them. No matter what. And set the example of godliness. Spur them on toward love and good deeds. Will you be that person? And so he was called a pillar. Now let's look quickly at John's contribution. Did you know this? John is given credit for writing the Gospel of John. Just think if, if John didn't do that. If he had decided not to write down these things, and, and these things that he says were written are written so that you and I may believe. Is what he tells us. And so he's, re he's writing his gospel. Just think if he had not done that. We wouldn't have John 3.16. You think about that for a moment. Just snatch that out of your Bible and forget it altogether. Wouldn't that make you... I mean, doesn't that make you thankful that John was dependable? That God could give him a revelation. He would write that out. I mean, just think if we didn't have... So he's credited with the gospel. He's credited with 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Okay? I love 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. We love because he loved us first. Amen? Amen. If we confess our sins, 1st John 1, 9, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just think if we didn't have John to write that. 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. He gave us the revelation. And by the way, it's not revelations. Revelations is a gospel group from Mississippi. It's the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ. One revelation. One person who is revealed. Who is the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's about His glory becoming known to the nations. That's what the book is about. And John wrote that. And listen, John was in a difficult, desperate situation, exiled on the island of Patmos. He could have been like I would have been 
and said, oh, woe is me. Uh, and uh, I'm so sad. And look at my circumstance. And don't you feel bad for me? But instead, the Lord Jesus Christ said, write these things down in Revelation 21 and verse 5. All the things that he showed him, he said, write these things down. And now we have the bookend of your Bible, the revelation of Jesus Christ that was given to John. And he was faithful to do that. A.W. Tozer said, John saw further in all directions. Why would God put John up on that mountain? For one thing, it was the grace of God. But I think John was able to stand and look out on that mountain because he was dependable. The last thing I want us to think about is John's continuance. And when I say his continuance, Jesus indicated that he was going to continue on and maybe that means, some speculate, well, John didn't die. God took him up. Or some even think, well, he's roaming the earth now as an evangelist. I don't know. That's craziness. But either way, um, God can do that if he wants to. When we think about his continuance, the, per, the point of that is that he was going to live longer than the rest of the disciples. And through history, it's kind of sparse what we find out. Uh, but... We don't, have, we don't have a full view of what, he, what happened. We don't have a clear record of his death. But some say he lived to be over 100 years old. Which is pretty significant for someone in that day. But Jesus said to uh, Peter in John chapter 21. Let's just his, listen to what it says in verse 20. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. Now John once again, is calling himself the disciple whom Jesus loved, the one who also had leaned back against him during the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Do you remember what Jesus had told Peter? He said, when you were young, you dressed yourself and you went wherever you wanted to go. In other words, you were free. You could do what you wanted to do. When you're old, someone else is going to dress you. And they're going to lead you where you don't want to go. In other words, you're going to die a martyr's death. And Peter looks at John and he says, well, what about him? <laughs> Leave it to Peter. What about this man? Jesus said to him, if it is my will that he should remain until I come. I mean, if he should live until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. You know, I think about John. John didn't worry about that question. John said, wherever he leads, I'll go. But John also adds this in verse 23. So the saying spread abroad among the brothers that this disciple was not to die. So even the disciples believed that John was not going to die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he was not to die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come. What is that to you? This disciple who is bearing witness about these things, this is the disciple who is bearing witness about these things and who has written these things and we know that his testimony is true. So this is the last point. John in his writing, everything that he wrote was faithful and true and you can depend on it as God's word for you. How to be dependable like John. Three quick points. Be humble. John was modest, calling himself by other names and unwilling to say who he was. John Flavel said, They that know God will be humble, and they that know themselves cannot be proud. John was a humble man. And, and when we think about humility, Humility puts you in the position to understand that it doesn't, and this is important for being dependable, it doesn't depend on you. 
That's really truly the key to becoming a dependable Christian. Is to understand that it doesn't depend on you. It depends on Him. So to be the kind of Christian that is faithful is to say, Yes, Lord, whatever you call me to do, I will do. Not in my strength, in yours. Not my will, but thine. In humility. Not, oh, look at me, I'm so good, God called me to do this. Be humble. Secondly, be available. John was there when other people fled. I always think about Joshua in the Old Testament. The Bible says that whenever everyone would go home from the tent of meeting, Joshua the son of Nun would stay at the tent. He was there when everyone else left. Be, depend- be available. And then lastly, be willing. John went where Jesus said. John served how Jesus served. And John was even willing to give his own life for the sake of the gospel. Are you dependable? Can the Lord Jesus Christ call your number? Call you up for service? And get an answer? Or does he get the busy signal whenever he calls your number? Let's pray together. Lord, there are so many things that garner our attention away from you and the things of God. The anxious cares of this world. The toil. The daily striving to hold on to our lives. But Lord, You teach us that the one who seeks to save his life will lose it. But the one who loses his life for Your sake and for the sake of the Gospel will truly find it. Lord, we want to be the disciples, the ones whom You may call upon And we will answer the call faithfully every time. Help us to be like John in so many of these ways. Help us to have a character that is faithful. Help us to desire closeness with You. Help us long to be with You. And Lord, in that place, totally surrendered to You, We will have everything that we will need. And you will receive the praise and the glory that is due you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hope you have a good evening.